Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In one of the previous videos I made on this channel, I presented Playground, which is a streamlit application I made to interact with machine learning models directly from the browser. After reviewing some comments on this video, I decided to make a short video series uh, to present Streamlit so that you can get started with this tool. So without further ado, let's have a look. Streamlit is a powerful Python library that gets you started with building interactive web application in no time. It provides a lot of widgets such as user inputs, sliders, histograms, data uploaders, and so on, uh, so that you can craft your machine learning project without the need of using HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. Uh, you can get started with Streamlit by uh, going through their documentation. It's very well written. And you can also browse the Streamlit community gallery where you can find a lot of applications that people open sourced and on different topics, NLP, computer vision, uh, geography, uh, sports, and so on and so forth. You can browse these projects. You can click on them and check them out directly from the link. And you can also browse the source code and adapt it to your project. In this video, I will show you how you can get started with Streamlit, how you can install it on your machine, and then how you can use it to plot and display some data. Then in the next videos, I will show you how you can interact with the user input and how you can make your app interactive and then how you can share it by deploying it to the cloud. So let's get started with installing Streamlit. It's very easy. You can type pip install Streamlit. But what I usually do to make my projects clean and independent from each other is using pipenv. pipenv is a package manager that allows you to create virtual environment that are separate between your projects. So basically what you have to do here is to have pipenv installed on your machine. You, you can install it by calling pip install pipenv. It will install pipenv globally on your computer. And then you can start a virtual environment inside a folder, an empty folder, by calling the installation of your first package. I will first start by installing Streamlit. I have already done this. So this command will create a virtual environment that will be named after your project. And then you can add other dependencies. I'm installing pandas and black to handle the formatting of my code. So once you have all this installed, you can start prototyping and developing on your machine. So what I can do here is activate my environment by calling the command pipenv shell. I have already done this and this will start and activate your virtual environment. And then you can launch streamlit run app.py. So just to show you the structure, the structure of this project, I created an empty file called app.py, which will handle the code of our application. And I created and made a folder called data. And inside it, I put the iris dataset that we will play with inside our Streamlit application. So I can start my application calling Streamlit run app.py. This will fire a local web server on this port. Let's move this to this view where I have opened uh, my project inside VS Code. And here we can see the app directly. And this app will be hot reloaded. So every time we write something inside this section, we will have it displayed directly and dynamically on this web view. So let's start. I will import Streamlit as ST. Okay. So I will hit this button so that everything is hot reloaded. So I can use Streamlit to display data directly to the browser. So let's put a title, for example. This is my first application. OK. OK, I can add a header, a machine learning uh, application to detect types of flowers, let's say. And I can add a subheader built by OK, 
I can use Streamlit to display an enhanced uh, text uh, data using the markdown uh, method. So basically a markdown is a portion of text that you can style with a lot of enriched enhanced uh, formatting. So this is a description, for example. I can put a paragraph, a bigger paragraph, let's say. So I'm inserting a lorem ipsum, okay. Uh, I can use multi-line uh, comments, multi-line uh, text inside the markdown. So yes, okay. Uh, this is my second description, okay. And I can use markdown to style some portions of the text. So let's see, this is an italic text. I can add the italic formatting by adding two asterisk, as we see here. And I can put a bold text by adding double asterisk at the beginning and at the end of my text. I can use also the markdown method to add some list. So first element, second element. Okay, it looks clean. I can use other methods to display other types of data. Imagine, for example, that you want to provide some information to the user. You can call the info method. This is an information. You can add also a warning. This is a warning. You can add an error because this may happen sometimes. This is an error. Okay. You can add some other types of data inside your application. Let's say, for example, that you want to display the JSON response from an HTTP request and you have this information inside a JSON format. You, want, you don't want to for example, uh, cast it to a string. Let's say you have a JSON request response like this. So let's JSON response. Uh, okay, let's put a status to 200 and then text uh, response succeeded. Okay, if you want to display this in a good way, you can use the ST dot write method and basically the write method of streamlit is quite magical it provides a lot of functionality to display all sorts of data so you can use it to display a json file like this you can for example list data let's say for example i want i have a list of items item one item two item three Okay, you can use it to display some lists. Okay, now let's say, for example, I want to load my data frame from the Iris dataset. So Iris dataset, I have to import pandas, okay. So Iris dataset is pd read csv, okay. I can use the st data frame or write, for example, to plot the iris data and I can see it directly here. So let's look at this data. For example, I want to plot the distribution of the classes uh, in this data set. I can do it very easily. So I can create class dist equal to iris data. Then I have to call the value counts method. And then I can use streamlit plotting capabilities to plot this data. So I can use the part chart uh, method and I can I can pass the class this directly. So this will plot directly the the class distribution as we see we have 50 samples for each class which is quite good. 
Uh, there are other ways to plot data interactively inside Streamlit. You can use the, the native uh, plotting capabilities built on Altair, and you can also use PyPlot chart, uh, Plotly chart, sorry. You can use Matplotlib charts, and you can use Bokeh chart as well. If you want to learn more about the capabilities of Streamlit in handling text and image data and media in general, you can have a look at the tutorial. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, let's keep this simple and show you all this for now, but you can learn a lot more uh, by going through the documentation. Uh, now that would be all for this video. In the next video, I will show you how you can use uh, user inputs to get them directly uh, and play with them and make your app interactive. So see you in the next video.